All right, in this video, we're going to look at an example of how to approximate zeros of a polynomial using a graphing calculator. And uh, the example we're going to work out is this one here. Um, we want to approximate the zeros. What values of x will make this function equal to zero? And that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. Uh, the calculator is only going to let us approximate, though, so unless it was an exact integer or a nice decimal uh, fraction of some sort. But let's see what happens. Let's go to y equals and let's type in this function. x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x minus 35. All right, and we'll zoom 6 just to see what the graph looks like on a standard screen. And to be quite honest with you, that's not that bad if we're looking for zeros. Now, if we were looking for maximums and minimums, which we're not in this video, but that's a max up there, and it'll dip down down here. So you would need to zoom out or change your window to see a minimum uh, down there. But I don't care about that. The only thing I care about is that, that, and that. What are those values of x that make this function equal to zero? So to do that, we want to go to second trace, and we want to go to zero. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this, and notice I'm just, I'm pressing the arrow, and if I, I'm actually pressing the left arrow right now, and you can see that flash and tick mark. Um, since this is on a standard screen, that means that right there is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 10. Each little dash represents uh, one unit. So with that in mind, uh, let's find this one first. Now there's two ways you can do this, and I want to show you both ways in this example. Um, notice the little flashers moving along. I'm just pressing the left arrow, and it's, I want to be on the left side of that x-intercept, that zero. That flashing piece is on the left side of where it crosses the x-axis. You could keep on moving down further, which would make it further to the left, and that'll be fine. But as long as it's to the left of where it crosses the x-axis, press enter. And then you want to go to the right side. So in this case, we want to go above because that is on the right side of where it crosses. So you can press enter again and then press enter one more time. Well, that's a nice zero, negative five. So that is an approximate or that, that is an exact zero, negative five. So that's one of our answers. All right. And we got three of them up here. Notice we do have uh, three real zeros. So let's do another one. Let's go to second trace. Let's go to zero. And before I show you that other one, let me show you um, the other technique of doing this instead of using the arrow or scrolling with the cursor. What you can do is you can type in a left bound. Now if we, I'm going to give you this negative five answer again. If we count negative one, two, three, four, there's negative five and there's negative six. So what you can do is you can type in an x value that is to the left of where it crosses right here. For example, since this is, it looks like, I mean, the answer is negative 5, but a number that's to the left of negative 5 would be negative 6. So I'm going to type in negative 6 as a left bound, and I'm going to press enter. Now we can type in a right bound, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Any of those will be left bounds. I'm going to type in negative 4. That way I'm definitely being between uh, these two numbers. So I'm going to type in negative 4, which will be a right bound. Press enter one more time when you see guess, and as you can see, it will still give you that same zero. That's just two techniques of finding zero. So now let's find the second one. Now, left bound. Notice I got this flashing cursor. It's above the x-axis, but notice this flashing cursor is on the left side of where it crosses right here. So that is a left bound. Now we can go down here. This is to the right. It's a right bound of where it crosses the x-axis. So we press enter and then press enter one more time. So if we want to round this to say, let's just do the nearest tenth, negative 2.6. That is an approximation, but uh, that's fine. It's not exact, but uh, like I said, the video is approximating zeros. So let's check that other technique again. Let's go to second trace and zero. Now I'm going to type I'm going to type in the left bound instead of scrolling. So I mean I don't I don't care about that flashing cursor anymore. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Negative four is definitely to the left of where 
this graph crosses the x-axis. So that could be a left bound of negative 4. A right bound, negative 1, negative 2, that's definitely to the right of where it crosses right here. So how about negative 2 is a right bound, and then we press enter one more time, and see you still get that same zero that we've already mentioned. Two different ways of using that left bound, right bound technique. Now let's go ahead and find this last one. Now it looks like it's somewhere between positive 2 and positive 3. So I'm going to use the technique for uh, typing in the left bound and the right bound. Second trace, 0. All right, and I want to find that one right there. So uh, that's somewhere between 2 and 3. My left bound would be 2. The right bound would be 3. And press enter one more time. So a positive 2.6 if we round to the nearest tenth. And those are your three zeros. Now you might say, why don't we hunt for any more? Well, the most number of real zeros that you could have would be the degree of that exponent. And as you can see, we have three real zeros. That's the most we can have. So that's how we do it, and that's the techniques. Um, I recommend uh, getting used to when you go to second trace and you go to uh, find the zero, for the I recommend getting used to typing in a left bound. Like I did here, I said a left bound was two. I mean, we could even say the left bound was one if we wanted to because one is to the left of where it crosses. And our right bound, could it, you could do three, four, you could do even five because there's only one spot on that graph where it crosses between that left bound and that right bound and we're still going to get that same answer. I recommend using that technique because sometimes if you were trying to scroll, notice, I mean, that here's the cursor. It's going up. Now it's gone. I mean, it, it's hard to find that cursor sometimes unless you get used to reading where it is down here at the bottom. So um, practice both those techniques. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.